How can you get motivated to learn English? That is a question that I get asked every single day. And it's a question that's really difficult to answer. But today I'm going to try. And I'm going to try by telling you some stories. So recently I was looking through some old photographs and I came across this photograph of me and my grandma. It's incredible how one moment captured on film can bring back such powerful memories. And for me, it brought back two really powerful memories. The first one was, of course, my, my grandma. And the second one was my time at high school, my experience of learning. But first, I want to tell you about my grandma. Like most Australians at that time, she wasn't actually born in Australia. She was born in uh, Newtonards in Northern Ireland in 1923, which, which was not a great time in, in history. In fact, her husband fought in the Second World War. But in 1950, they decided to emigrate to Australia and they became 10 pound poms. Now, Australia is a country built on immigrants. And so they needed a, a name for them. And so Australians would call immigrants pomegranates because immigrants and pomegranates, they rhyme. So they became known as poms. And my grandma and her husband, they were 10 pound poms because they paid 10 pounds for their tickets to, to Australia. And so they started their, their new life in, in the lucky country in, in Australia. But for my grandma, life wasn't always easy. Like most people who experienced the horrors of war, her husband struggled with, with alcohol and he died of pneumonia on the back seat of a bus when he was only 38 years old. And so my grandma lived most of her life as a single parent. But she was a fighter and she loved people. I took this photograph of her at a party just hours after she was released from hospital and she's still wearing the hospital bracelet. Uh, being around people just, just made her so happy. Buddhists say that the root of all unhappiness comes from desire. And I think that my, my grandma was living evidence that, that this is probably true because my grandma had no ambition, no career. She basically had no possessions. But she was always happy. And she loved tea. I remember when she died um, around Christmas time in, in 2007, that when she took her last breaths, the whole room smelled like tea. 
I'll, I'll never forget that. And she had this saying that she loved to repeat all the time, which was, you die if you worry, and you die if you don't. So why worry? <laughs> and like most of the, of the most important advice in life, it's, it's so difficult to live by those words. To make your words match your, your actions. And, and that brings me to my time at, at high school. So the photograph was taken on the day of my high school graduation. And for most people, that is a day of celebration. When people are celebrating the end of all their hard work and they're celebrating their future the things that are to come. But for me, there was, there was nothing to celebrate because I hated high school. And I didn't just hate it, but I did really badly, right? So at that time, you received a score. At the end of high school, you received a score out of a maximum of 510. And depending on your score, um, you could choose to study medicine or, or something else, right? The higher the score, the better. And out of 510, I got 230, <laughs> uh, which wasn't even enough for me to go to vocational school and study art. So I took a job in a video shop uh, and I, I worked in a video shop for years. The joy of learning had been killed in me. The whole institute of learning was, was poison. And if you had told me at that moment that I would be a teacher, <laughs> I, I, I would have laughed in your face. But here I am, um, working as a teacher and I've taken on the responsibility of being a teacher and it's a responsibility that I take seriously. And so I want to tell you another story. One day, a rabbi sees a young man eating a fish and he asks the young man, why are you eating that fish? And the young man says, because I love fish. And the rabbi says, oh, you love fish. Well, if you love fish, then why did you kill it? and cut it open and cook it and eat it. You don't love fish. You love yourself. That's a selfish love. How many of you can say that you really love English? Maybe you openly say that you hate it. That needs to change, but maybe you say you love it, but actually it's selfish love. And you are killing the joy of learning. You see, language is a living thing. It can only survive if people use it to communicate. We can communicate right now because for millions of years, our ancestors used language. We owe it to them to love language. When you treat language as something to study, 
instead of something to use. You kill the joy of learning and you kill your motivation and you kill your chances of success. You have to make your actions match your words. When you say that you want to learn, but you just memorize. When you say that you have patience, but you want to learn in five minutes a day. When you say that you're working hard, but you're just waiting for somebody to fill you with knowledge. When you say that you want to communicate, but you don't speak. When you use exams to measure your success, all of those things kill the joy of learning. Please don't allow yourself to use that selfish love to kill the joy of learning. Language is all about people. It always has been. And the great thing about language is that you can do whatever brings you joy just in English. It's time to stop studying and start communicating. And don't let fear stop you from doing that. Because as my grandma said, you die if you worry and you die if you don't. So why worry? I'm Christian, this is Kangaroo English and I'll see you in class.